Yo, thanks for clicking on my video. I'm happy to see you. I'm happy you're here. All right, let's talk. As Ariana Grande once said, Cause you ain't my boyfriend, and I ain't your girlfriend, but you don't want me to see nobody else. And that's kind of today's topic, is uh, situationships. Yeah. You might be asking, Louis, what, what the, the hell, hell is a situationship? situationship? When I ain't your boyfriend, and you ain't my girlfriend, and you don't want me to see nobody else. She summed it up, guys. It's pretty simple. But actually, it's when you're in a relationship with somebody, there's no label on it, you're exclusive, you, uh, you fool around, you mess around, you're basically friends with benefits. That's what you do. But you ain't nobody's girlfriend, buster. And I ain't your boyfriend. You ain't my boyfriend either. You know? So my stance before I get on a giant tangent is that I don't agree with the idea of situationships. We have friends with benefits. That's people with no ties to each other. They're kind of just like, if you want boundaries, I don't want you to sleep with anybody. That's fine. You know? But my generation found the need to not do that because it's already a thing and they want to do something new. I forget who this was, but there was an account on TikTok where they were engaged, but they weren't together and they weren't going to get married because they didn't agree with that. I don't agree with situationships because they're like another layer that is added to something that doesn't need to be just so that you don't have to commit fully to a relationship. If it's over, it's over. If it's not, it's not. If it turns into a relationship, then it does, but it usually doesn't. I'm not speaking from experience. I'm just speaking from my friend's experience because that means I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'd like to preface something else before I get into the rest of this discussion. I don't know what these people have been through. I don't know what you've been through if you've ever been in a situation. I don't know why you make this decision, what you've been through in your life, what terrible things you've been through, that, or be in a position where somebody can hurt you so terribly. I can see all of that. You know, you've been through a lot and you don't want to get into a relationship that can possibly damage you even more than you possibly already are and to that i say you got this if you want to be in a relationship you can do it i i believe in you you really could do it i'd like to say it's not that serious but it, it is it is that serious and you guys would be in a relationship and you would be committed to each other and if something happened it would be one of your faults or both then it would suck and it would hurt but it's good to go through that stuff honestly i think a lot of the, the reason situationships exist is because people just don't want to be responsible. Honestly, I think there's a lack of responsibility crisis as well, not just a love crisis, which we'll get into that later. We will, you, right there. No, not that guy, you. We'll get into that later. Lack of responsibility is a big thing, and it, it's in just about every single youth. When it comes to relationships, a lack of responsibility is detrimental. To have that be a key component of what people are bringing into their relationship with other people is, like, bad. I this is all just an opinion, obviously, and you don't have to agree with that. Maybe you like situationships because you really just don't want to commit to a relationship. And a lack of commitment is something that I've also struggled with before. It's real. It's a real thing, and it sucks. It's a real thing. It's real, and it, and it stinks. There's not much you can really do about that. Are you going to let it keep you down, keep you out of a happy relationship? Maybe. Is that anybody's fault? No. Is it a bad decision? I don't know. Big, big but, though. I still don't agree with the idea of a situationship. Because it's hand-in-hand hand with the love crisis. Louis, what, what the, the hell, hell is, is a, a love, love crisis? crisis? My proof that there is a love crisis before I explain what it is, actually before I get into all of that, let me just do a content warning. There is going to be talks of very serious subjects involving abuse or troubled households if that would set you off or cause you discomfort. I advise you to stop watching the video. And I don't want you to go. If it's better for you though, I support your decision. Just jump to this timestamp if you want to stay in the video and you don't want to watch this part. 50% of marriages in the United States end in divorce. That's half. That's a lot. That's a lot of broken households, including my own. Single mothers, single fathers, raising families on their own. A lot of people getting very hurt because of this. It causes a lot of trouble in the household, a lot of discomfort. Everybody thinks it's their fault. Everybody feels terrible about it. It's a pandemic of its own. And one in three women are in an abusive relationship and one in four men. 
are in an abusive relationship. That gap between the men and the women, and we'll talk about in a different video, but specifically in this one, it's just the numbers. There's a lot of people who are in and staying in abusive relationships. I just wanted to take that part of the video very seriously. It's not funny. It's not cool. Now that everybody knows all the statistics, the people who could handle and watch that part, let's get back to the, uh, the making fun of people part. So the love crisis is just the fact that people find it harder to stay happy and together. It's a big deal. It's uh, most of relationships end. The love crisis boiled down to its little bitty self is that it's just people are very distracted. They're very hurt from other relationships that have ended. There's a lot of problems that go on that involve people's happiness and well-being. A lot of people don't understand what depression and anxiety are and those people are stupid. You should do your research and make sure you can make your partner happy. Because if you don't, I'm going to go to your house, find every single bag of chips in there, and crush them in the bag. I'm going to fluff them back up, and I'm going to put them back on the shelf, and you're going to cry. I'm going to be like the Batman of the world, just crushing chips. They're going to call me... I couldn't come up with a good superhero name. <laughs> Please help. Just uh, put it in the comments below. Please. So what is the big problem, though? What's What if we had to boil it down? If the love crisis was a big old oil and we had to boil it, we had to boil it down to what it is. Probably the internet. Yes, a lot of people before the internet were in abusive relationships and should have left them and should have gotten divorces and stuff like that. And now people just realize they should do that. But there's so much information on the internet that can help you understand how to help your partner or advise you in not being an asshole. Big question, why are people asses? I, I don't get it. Why would you be mean to somebody? Guys, stop being mean to people. It doesn't make sense. And that is how I solve the world's problem of anger and hatred. There's a lot of people who talk on the internet about what women want and what men want and how to act so women like you or how to act so you can make men obsessed with you. And to that I say, they're literal actual hot piles of shit. I think that's obvious and most people know that. Or, or maybe people are stupid. Just kidding, I know, I know they, they are. are. A lot of them, maybe they follow one video they see of how to act. It's like those old pickup artist videos where they teach you, hey, just... Just go on the street and talk to women, even if they look extremely uncomfortable, and then ask for their phone number, where they'll have to give it to you, because women are games and conquests to be beaten. It's the same thing for men, also. A lot of it is toy with his heart, mess with his brain, make sure he thinks he can't live without you. They're both terrible. Just be good people. Be nice to each other. And then, if you think somebody is romantically interesting to you, and they also think that, do that. There would be no love crisis. It would be easy. And yes, there would still be arguments and misunderstandings amongst partners. That's okay. If anybody ever told you if you argue in a relationship, you should end it, I don't know who would tell you that, but, but they're, they're wrong. wrong. So yes, the big problem is probably the internet. It causes a lot of issues in relationships. It causes a lot of issues in people pre-relationship that have to do with issues that would be issues in relationships. People discussing situationships and songs, so many songs being about situationships and then it becoming a very idealized idea of what people should do. Then what's the solution? <sighs> we might be too deep in the hole, guys. Uh, I think it might be too late to solve this kind of problem. Maybe this is the future of relationships. Maybe they're just going to be uh, non-deterministic, even though they're completely determined. Which is stupid, and we all know that, except we don't. Not all of us do, apparently. And that that's okay. That's okay. You know what? If it makes you happy. I just gotta say it. Just gotta say it. If, if it makes you happy, then it's okay. I guess, I guess there, that I shouldn't be worrying about it too much. It's just really fun to think about how problematic it could be to have situationships being the main focus of relationships. People being uncommitted, unhappy, 
and confused at all times about their situation they are in. Oh, I get it. That's why it's called a situationship. Because <laughs> you're putting yourself in the situation. Well, whose fault is that, buddy? You know, it's, it's, really, it's really not a big deal, I guess, that, like, people don't want to commit. I was at the point in my life one time, too, where I didn't really want to be in relationships. I didn't just enter a relationship and not give it a label, if that makes any sense. I, I was just fooling around like most people did at that age, you know? I mean, honestly, another big part of the love crisis is how teenagers are just too involved in things that are very adult. And I'm not going to talk about that. You know what I'm talking about, because my generation specifically has been there and been part of that. We've been very sexual, I guess, and at a young age, and that's unhealthy, I think. Obviously, before society was a thing, age wasn't really an idea that mattered and stuff like that. But now, we're civilized, and we know that that's wrong. So the fact that people that young are getting involved in the world beyond what they sh should have to comprehend and deal with, it's probably the main issue. It's has to do with the internet, but that's the main issue. People are too involved too young in something that is part of a relationship, but it's not the biggest part of a relationship. The biggest part is the commitment. Having somebody to stick with and have with you at all times. Somebody who can stand by you and support you. I don't necessarily believe in marriage, personally, because religion. religion. <laughs> Still, it's just nice to have somebody who's there with you and for you. And that's the conclusion, is why I don't like the idea of a situationship is because it puts people who are confused and want more, but know they can't really, but don't want to lose what they have, and not able to have what they want and need. That sucks, and I don't want people to have to deal with that. So that's why I don't like situationships. That's the end of the video. Thanks for spending your time here with me. I appreciate you very much. Make sure to to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to stick around for more. Stay safe, stay frosty. Later.